Hello and welcome to this video brought to you by the Lois Art. My name is Manuel Kafo and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. In this Blender tutorial, I'll be looking at all things camera inside Blender. So basically, we'll be trying to understand the Blender camera system. So let's get started. There's two ways which you can add objects or camera inside Blender. The first one is going here to the add and add camera. You can add it or you can press shift A to add your camera. Okay. So to look through your camera, you can go to view, camera, active camera, and you can have it. But if you go here and you can see there's a shortcut called uh, that is assigned to this, which is numpad zero. So if you click on zero, you can both go into the camera view and out of it. If you want to kind of um, use this to use this camera as a tripod to move around, you can go, if you press N, to bring out this menu or you can click here and then you go to view and you select uh, camera to view so basically all the shortcuts that you know with blender will now work through the camera so you can move this and it helps you position your camera and once you're done and you've gotten the particular shot which you like you can just uncheck this and if you click, you can go back to your 3D view. So let's check out some of the settings um, that you might have not known that Blender has, or basically you don't know the use of. So we have the lens, we have the camera settings, we have background image, we have viewport display. So we quickly go over all of this. So we have the type of camera, which is the default one, which is the perspective, which we can see now, basically mimicking the human eyes. Uh, which by default uh, it's usually 35 millimeters that's the human view uh, but the new blender default is set to 50 which um, tends to give or make your 3d model look much better but you have other types of camera in blender you have the autographic uh, this is great for um, getting an auto autographic view or basically um, reducing the focal length of your camera um, something like that so you cannot use this in the typical way you can use the camera when you have camera to view. Um, if you want to zoom out, you use this to zoom out or you have to move the camera itself backwards. Okay. So we have another one which is called the uh, panoramic. So this has a lot of cool effect. Uh, you cannot really see the effects of this particular camera uh, um, camera lens because it happens mainly in render time so for that let's switch into the render mode so this is the default this is what you um, see and we have the fish eye um, the fish eye um, lens so there are other options we have the echo um, equi rectangular so this is great for I don't know if I pronounced that well but oh well uh, this is great for HDRI images. Um, you can also play with some settings to get different effects. You have the fish eye which we started with and you can play with the lens to bring it closer. There are a lot of things which you could play with. The size of the camera, kind of zoom things inside. It's basically treating the 3D object as an image um, because this can allow you actually scale the scene okay i think this is not the one i say this one this can allow you scale the scene i'm kind of looking for the correct one okay this particular one so basically you can manipulate the scale of the, the scene with this so these are basically different uh, camera types we have so let's go back to the default one since we've messed this a lot we'll just add another camera Okay, so let's keep moving. So we have the uh, camera's um, sensor fit. Uh, basically, the size sometimes correspond with the focal length. So you probably um, don't need to play with this so much. You can just use the focal length for most of for adjusting the lens, basically. So now we'll go into the uh, visibility stuff. This is basically more of a workflow thing. Um, workflow features that will help you get um, better feedback or better like a helper to make you get better image 
so let's start with the safe area so the safe area as you can see it's basically when you're setting up your shot and you want to make sure that all the important things are kind of inside here um, so this can help you keep an eye on that so you can adjust this especially when you're working with a team to kind of direct them or kind of keep yourself aware of what you're doing so these are just uh, more settings that you can use to adjust all of this so we'll turn that off and then we have background image this does what it says it basically turns the it allows you to add image in front of the camera so let's quickly load one i'll load one of my artworks um, this is my very old artwork uh, let's see this one looks cool so um, it has simple settings you can play with the opacity you can make it set in front of any object uh, you can play with the way it's displayed the framing method and you can scale and do all those cool stuff so that's the background image you can also add videos um, through this property so now we have the viewport display this is pretty cool so we can go back to object mode so the first thing that stands out that is pretty much uh, what I use for all my project is the um, this particular feature. So it's going to um, darken this part basically like this, so that you can just focus on the object you have in your scene without worrying about any other thing. And now you have the limit. So this is also great uh, because um, right here you, there's no way to really know what this does, but it's quite helpful because it could help you focus you it's also serve as a focus for the camera so if we want to play with this parameter or the position of this we could go here in the depth of field we enable this we can control this and use this as a distance to kind of um, create focus on our object and the focus certain areas which we'll talk on um, touch on soon so you have the means this will show you the range of the means which you get when you render out the image um, the sensor and we also have the name if in a situation where you want to display the name of this object okay so another helpful stuff when you're kind of um, compositing your scene is having uh, being able to frame them better with all the cool um, composition guides so we have the rule of thirds basically you want to have your focal um, your main object um, or focal object um, in the where this two, where the lines meet or it basically just helps you composite your image better there are other types of um, the comp there are other types of composition guides so you have diagonal basically you want to make the focal element always here or around this region um, you have the golden ratio, you have triangle A. So these are basically cool composition, uh, composition guys that you can use uh, for your image. And then finally we'll talk, touch on the depth of fields a bit. So like we said, we can use the viewport display if we enable the limit. And we'll open another viewport here where we can see where the limit is. So now if we go ahead and hit render. Um, or we can use EV for that. So let's switch this to EV. So here in EV, we can see everything is all blurred out, and we can see why that's happening because from the our guide here, it's not. It's basically every, anything here. It's what's gonna be in focus. Okay, so we can fix that or adjust that by going to the depth of field, and basically adjusting the focal distance so we can see anywhere this pointer is that's where it's going to be focused so if we move this forward or backwards it start getting blurry and there are a lot of settings that you could use to get great effect from your depth of field so if you want to see me cover that you can let me know in the comment and then we can have a particular video where we'll cover it uh, we try to understand the depth of field so finally let's look about uh, let's talk about the dimension because this is another interesting factor about the camera uh, so we have the resolution of the um, the scene basically but it's usually re related to the camera uh, so you but you could set it up here um, the different resolution you want to render out 
um, this the percentage of quality so you, you can actually increase this to something higher but this definitely affects the render time because it's basically more pixels to render um, something I didn't touch on with the camera is that you, Blender comes with different camera presets uh, which you access here access here so think so any place you see this icon this in Blender basically it shows that the presets that comes with that particular feature so we can select from different cameras um, that will probably have different focal lengths to imitate the reward camera uh, but basically that feature is there so if you want to go back to the default think we'll go to full frame or not let's see or we could just backspace and we go back to the default or you can right click reset to default value so that's basically it guys um, I know this is um, a very boring topic not very exciting things to show but I, I thought this was something important that we can talk um, touch on so if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up and if you wish to see more from me please hit the subscribe button and to support this channel you can check out our product uh, in the descriptions we have the Pupa add-on and you can also check out this my check out my store where I have a lot of blender course on grooming characters and texturing and also other helpful assets that you can use so thank you so much for watching bye bye for now see you next time